Welcome to the Tank Roll Actions Guide. Here we'll go through our roll actions to explain their uses for newbies while still going through multiple or higher end content uses. You should be treating these skills as an extension of your job toolkit, with some actions being extremely key for proper survival. As a tank, your main goal is to keep enemy attention by doing damage and minimizing the damage you take, but your roll actions can do that and much more. This more bit is what is commonly overlooked while being the most important aspect of your roll actions. At the very least, the improved survival and solo content will be proof enough of that. We have seven roll actions as a tank job, with each one having a very different effect from the last, meaning a bunch of different situations you'll want to learn how to recognize. We'll start seeing those more as we go through the actions. Let's get checking them now. Before we get into specific skills, I want to emphasize that almost all rolled actions are OGCD, off global cooldown abilities. These can be weaved, used between weapon skills or spell casts. You should have a few of these in your normal toolkit, obviously, but noting that these are almost all OGCD skills emphasizes how easy to use they can be. Level 8, Rampart. On a 90 second cooldown, this reduces all damage by 20% for 20 seconds. This is the most simple roll action we have as a tank. One of your tasks is reducing damage you take with skills like this. Anytime you are taking lots of damage, use Rampart for making it do less. Multiple wall pulling, where you grab every enemy up to a four stopping point in a dungeon. Tank busters, or other big damage situations. Simple as that, reduce damage. Level 12, Low Blow. On a 25 second cooldown, this stuns the target for 5 seconds with diminishing returns. Stunning with a low blow for a second or third stun will cause it to do 2.5 seconds or about 1 second of stun respectively. Afterwards, the enemy will be immune to stunning. This will essentially only come into play with multiple players all trying to stun enemies. This is something you'll basically only ever use on normal enemies, never bosses. After a certain point, all bosses will come with complete stun immunity with little to no exception. Even some normal enemies will be stun immune. While leveling up though, it can be nice to stun some bosses just for making them stop casting some skills. This will be your least useful roll action, but still useful when you get used to it. Rather than trying to dodge some enemy AoEs, use a low blow to stun them out of it. This also allows your party to do more damage as they don't need to move out of range. It's extremely marginal, more notable for the safety of removing an AoE from the field instantly. There is maybe one situation in the entire game where you will want to consciously use your stun in a specific way. Even then, melee DPS come with their own version of low blow. You can stun a single enemy in a trash pool for 5 seconds to take no damage from it. Once again, extremely marginal to borderline useless. But if you're itching to find some use for it, there you go. I'd prefer to use it for removing an AoE since that's an attack the party no longer needs to dodge too. Any party where your healer is a white mage, low blow becomes entirely useless. In trash pulls, white mages spam their holy spell, which does damage and stuns all enemies hit. After three holy uses, you're no longer able to stun anything. Level 15, Provoke. On a short 30 second cooldown, Provoke will shoot you up to the enmity lead of a single target, then add on top a small bonus of enmity. I say small, but it's actually a pretty good chunk. If you forgot, enmity is the value of how much an enemy hates you, and is something you actively want to have the most of as a tank. There is a wide variety of ways to use this skill. I'll go over them from most important to least important. Many, if not most, high-end duties have attacks that give vulnerability stacks to the tank. For example, let's take Ultima Weapon Extreme, or in this case, Unreal. Tanks will be hit with tank busters every so often that give Aetherplasm stacks. They will take more damage the more stacks they have, and at 5 stacks, will instantly die. To get rid of these stacks, you must let the timer run out, the timer refreshing every time the tank gets another stack. The only solution here is to swap tanks out. Whoever was main tanking the boss will become the off tank and let the other tank take over. The off tank will use Provoke and ensure their enmity stance is active, while the tank switching out turns this off. Provoke gives them a big boost of enmity to keep the boss when they swap in. This is something you basically never run into with casual content, but the moment you step into high-end duties, you need to know this. If you don't, your co-tank will die. You will likely also die, and then the whole party will wipe. Looking at you, Heavensward Dark Knights. The second use is when you die, and is about equally important as the first use. When you raise, wait for the healer to throw you a single heal, then hit Provoke to take the boss. This also assumes you are the only tank, or your co-tanks are also dead. 
If someone else is tanking the boss and doesn't need you to swap in like Ultima Weapon, let them keep it. If they are also dead and a DPS Wahile is currently acting as a tank, hit Provoke to get it off them. The longer you leave the boss to attack your squishier team members, the more people will die and potentially even lead to a wipe. You need to Provoke as soon as you can, but not too early that you end up dying immediately. The timing will take a bit to get used to, but Provoke ensures you quickly get back into the enmity lead. The third use is for taking enemy lead back in trash pulls, especially when doing multiple groups or wall-to-wall -wall pulling. A DPS may accidentally pull the enemy lead on a target. It often will be just one target, especially when you've pulled correctly. Instead of stopping to take the enemy back, keep running. Target the enemy you've lost the lead on and hit provoke. This keeps the pace of the pull consistent, which is extremely important for making wall-to-wall -wall pulls work. The last and final use I tend to use Provoke for is the most skill-based, pulling with it. This is very much not recommended by most players. However, Pretend Provoke is an OGCD ranged attack. Unmend, Shield Lob, Tomahawk, Lightning Shot, and Provoke all serve the exact same purpose, but with Provoke being weaved instead of an attack. If your opener doesn't take a ranged attack into account, you can open with Provoke to get enmity and position a boss towards the middle of an arena. But again, this needs to be used knowingly as just throwing provoke on a boss can be extremely jarring for your party. Or in trash pulls, when coming up to the next group, hit provoke to get the attention of the pack. They will start running towards you instead of remaining still. When they reach you, hit an AoE attack to get them stuck on you and not eating your team's face. This AoE is key and brings in the skill requirement again. If you are bad at aiming AoEs, any region effects the healer will put on you could end up having them take the enmity on all enemies you didn't use Provoke on. Miss your AoE, all those enemies start hitting the healer. For a final sub-use in this tactic, use both the ranged attack and Provoke. This is good for groups of two or three enemies. When coming up to a group of three enemies, use your ranged attack on the first enemy, swap targets, and use Provoke on the second. By the time you reach the group of enemies, the GCD will have cycled and you can use your ranged attack on the third enemy. A lot of possible uses, some harder than others to get right, but all worth knowing in my book. And a final side note, you cannot provoke fate enemies or hunt targets. Level 18, Interject. On a 30 second cooldown, this will interrupt a target spell cast. When this skill is useful is much more obvious than stunning them. All enemies are completely immune to interruption up until it begins to use a skill that can be interrupted. These are extremely obvious when you know what to look for, that being the cast bar pulsing like so. When the cast bar pulses, interject will stop the skill from being completed. Again, this is different from stuns. A stun will not interrupt the target unless the target is always able to be stunned. Make the cast bar bigger, use HUD layout to split it off from the enemy HP bar, move it somewhere else on your screen that you will see it better, whatever it takes. Be ready for when these bars start to flash. That means it's time for interject. In casual content, it's not going to exactly make or break a breaker run, with maybe one exception in Shadowbringers. In high-end content, failing to interject an interruptible skill will likely lead to an instant wipe. Bosses will buff themselves, debuff you, do deadly damage, whatever it might be. The stakes of interrupts get pretty high, but that's okay. There's plenty of room for you to learn the timing over multiple pulls, and of course, a few casual content bosses with interrupts you can practice on. Level 22, Reprisal. On a 60 second cooldown, this reduces the damage dealt by all enemies within 5 yams of you. The debuff will last for 10 seconds. I want to very much emphasize all this. It is an AoE, Area of Effect, Debuff. All enemies directly around you will be debuffed by reprisal, not just one. Though you can use it for just singular enemies, which is what you will do in boss fights. Use this just like Rampart in boss fights, more often than Rampart 2. In trash pulls, it becomes a bit harder to use, since you're doing an AoE and reducing the damage of all enemies around you, but what if some enemies are big, or there's a lot of enemies like in wall-to-wall -wall pools? You might not hit all enemies with this, as a result, it isn't quite as powerful as it could be. In smaller pulls, it should be no effort to hit all enemies with reprisal. In both cases though, move into the middle of the pack of enemies before hitting the skill. 
This ensures you hit as many enemies as you can, just don't also be standing inside an enemy AoE too. In Trials and Raids, there's multiple tanks. Reprisal does not stack with itself. If both of you use Reprisal on something, one of those Reprisals ended up being useless. If you see the other tank has used their Reprisal, make sure not to use yours. Otherwise, feel free to use Reprisal for both tank busters, your main use as a main tank, and raid-wide AoEs, your main use as an off-tank. Level 32, Arm's Length. On a 2-minute cooldown, Arm's Length comes with two effects and will remain on you for six seconds. The first and main one you will use is that this is a skill that ignores most knockback and draw-in effects. This includes another role action that healers have, Rescue. In many boss fights, they will do moves that might not even do damage, only pushing players around. These often come with arenas that you can fall off of, or have death walls. These moves go from minor annoyance that might make you lose a single hit, to potential death. This is especially true as a tank, as positioning the boss improperly can cause other players to mess up mechanics for one reason or another. Arm's Length says nah to that, and allows you to ignore certain knockback effects entirely. For an example of a current fight that has a huge spotlight on this skill, Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate has a mechanic that essentially requires the use of Arm's Length to defeat a knockback. Some other attacks in the same fight ignore knockback mitigations. Point is, this truly is an important aspect to get used to. Even if you aren't worried about your damage, learn when to Arm's Length to negate knockback if only for that purpose. Mistakes happen, and you may actually be in a bad spot or bad angle. You could get knocked off the arena just barely because you weren't as perfectly placed as expected. Better to arm's length and gain the extra damage than die because you stubbornly ignored it. Or alternatively, cause the boss to move afterwards into a bad position that makes the next mechanic harder. The other use is in dungeons. Any enemy that strikes you, not magic, will be given a debuff for 15 seconds. This is a 20% slow, which means attack speed. Functionally, a 20% mitigation for 15 seconds. That's as strong as Rampart, but only 5 seconds shorter. This will not work on bosses, as they will be immune to the slow, so keep on using it for the knockback mitigation even there. It can be very hard to feel the effect, since it is a slow and not a direct damage reduction, but it really is quite strong and important to put into your mitigation rotation, especially in those spicy wall-to-wall -wall pools. A large mob of enemies all being slowed down means less healing needed and less danger. Most enemies are physical, so even when magical enemies come into play, most of the enemies will be slowed by arm's length. So get using this skill in dungeons as often as you can. Bosses that have knockbacks, pop it off as much as you can for extra damage from not being knocked out of attacking range, and most importantly, for positioning. Then get sad when you go to use it in a savage fight, and still get launched halfway across the arena, because it's one of those moves that ignores arm's length. Level 48, Shirk. On a 2 minute cooldown, you can give 25% of your current enmity to any target party member within 25 yams. This has extremely limited, extremely specific use cases. This is only going to find use in 8 player trials and raids where there are 2 tanks extremely similar to Provoke's uses in those duties. The only player you will ever shirk is your co-tank. There are two potential situations you will do so. The first is most obvious, as mentioned, is tank swaps. After the off-tank uses Provoke, the main tank can use shirk to ensure the swap sticks with no issues. It can be deadly if even for a second the original tank takes back enmity lead. Shirking will be enough to prevent this mistake if just for a moment. The other use is to prevent a tank swap. In more casual content, the off tank tends to just stand there and look pretty. Tank swaps only happen when the tank outright dies, even if doing swaps will be better. Either way, we want to prepare for that potential death. Do so by turning on your enmity stance even as the off tank. Turning it off only when you're about to overtake the lead. You can delay this stance toggling by shirking. This way if the tank does die, you are in second for the enmity race and you already have your stance on to ensure you keep the boss on you. It will probably be better to just toggle your stance before you take the lead, but hey, it is an option that is there. Otherwise, this is a very important tool for higher end content. You really do not want a tank swap to fail. When you go from main tank to off tank, make sure to shirk after they use provoke. 
That covers all of our tank roll actions. These skills cover a lot of issues we may run into as we progress through the game, or otherwise help us be better party members. At worst, we can make a small difference in the course of a duty. In the best case, we'll be making or breaking the run with our actions in high-end duties. Make sure you get a good understanding of these skills, because you can't truly say you're playing your role if you ignore role actions, now can you? Thank you for watching this guide on your tank role actions. I hope you've seen how important role actions can be as part of your toolkit. A dead tank holds zero enmity, and each one improves survival in one way or the other. Be sure to ask questions on the skills if you don't quite understand the uses, and seek to improve just a little bit extra. Take care, and may the power of Anna did Hodgley waste to your enemies. And a big thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, and an extra, extra special thanks to my big dragons who are... Ayman Al-Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sadia Dios Hassan, Serex, Ethan Olson, Frazier97, Greg, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, T Rogue, Timmy, Tabood, and Zero Two. Thank you all again and have a good night.